Well, I guess, Leon, um, did you find out about the letter story from the Portland, Oregon side of it? Or did you hear about it later? Like, how did this kind of first get attention to you? I uh, learned about the story on the news. Yeah. Uh, being someone who had been following uh, human rights issues in China for a while, the name Ma Sanjia Labor Camp mm-hmm. had a special meaning to me because I had interviewed survivors from that very camp before. Mm-hmm. I knew it was one of the most notorious labor camps in China. If somebody managed to hide a letter inside Ma Sanjia Labor Camp, I knew there had to be an amazing story behind it. So I immediately contacted uh, Julie Keith. She was on board right away. Then the challenge is really to find the letter writer, Sun Yi. Yeah. That took us three years because I had developed an underground network of dissidents and journalists when doing my previous films. I just put the word out. Um, Three years later, somebody one day told me, I think I got your guy. Wow. So that's how we initially had um, contacted each other. We had a Skype call. Part of it is in the film. <coughs> part, of it is, part of it is in the film, and I explained what I wanted to do. It turned out so he had seen my previous work, mm. so he trusted me. And uh, we were ready to do a film together. There was only one problem. I couldn't go back to China anymore. And he did not know how to use a camera. So we do have to pull this off, mainly over Skype. And uh, that's how we did it. Can we talk about the fact that you can't go back to China? And that, I mean, you're one of the real voices of showcasing a lot of kind of the horrors of you know, the, the human rights issues. You've been really one of the voices for us Americans, at least, and Europeans to notice. Um, you talk about the difficulty of not being able to go to China at all. You're, you're not someone that's allowed. I mean, it's kind of a big deal. Right. Um, in 2006, I heard about the allegations of forced organ harvesting in China. My initial belief, my, my initial uh, reaction was one of complete disbelief. Uh, I knew they had been taking organs from death row inmates, but this is uh, an allegation that they are taking organs from uh, prisoners of conscience in the hundreds of thousands. So I couldn't believe it. But then I thought, what if it's true? <clears throat> I got it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <clears throat> so I started uh, investigating into it. Then I followed uh, two Canadians, David Matas and David Kilgore, in the investigation. That film took eight, eight years to make. Uh, when doing this film, I met many incredible individuals from China. They shared with me their stories, and I just felt this obligation to make sure their stories are told. Mm. That's why, actually, I started focusing on making films about human rights issues in China. Uh, and unfortunately, because of these films, uh, I was labeled a traitor by the state media in China. Uh, that, that was a clear sign that I shouldn't go back. Mm. You already mentioned that you had someone who didn't know how to film stuff, and you're getting him to film this. Um, how difficult was it just dealing in communication-wise through Skype and then not hearing from him for a little while? I mean... As far as time, how fearful were you that you were going to be able to at least get something out? I mean, it must have been kind of petrifying until you next heard from him and whether it came out. And then how did you actually get it to you, I guess would be the, op- the question. Uh, Communication-wise, because of the uh, uh, firewall in China, so he has to use uh, special software to bypass the firewall. In the meantime, he has to encrypt his connection to make sure our communication is safe. And uh, <clears throat> mostly he would shoot something, compress it, encrypt it, send to me. I would take a look. We would plan for the next day. Once in a while, he would then send me a hard drive of, of the raw footage. Mm. But of course, we can't use FedEx. 
<laughs> so again, we rely on our own、uh, personal network to pass the, the hard drive to me.、Uh, sometimes it took one month, sometimes two months. Altogether, I had four hard drives, and only when I got the hard drive in my hand, he will tell me the password. It was encrypted in a way that I had only one chance to unlock it.、Uh, if I input a, the wrong password, the drive will be locked forever. Wow! <clears throat> so that's how I did it. In terms of training him, I had ambitious plans in the beginning. <laughs> I was. I was developing a little curriculum and telling him, you know, you have to shoot for the edit. We want different shot sizes and so on and so forth. Very quickly, we realized that the all my advice is boiled down to one sentence: don't get caught. <laughs> and it was the、uh, iPhone that came to the rescue. You can always pull out an iPhone, pretending you are taking a picture, or Just checking your iPhone while secretly filming something going on.、Uh, in the end, <clears throat> not all shots are perfectly composed, but、uh, you do feel that you are right there with Sun Yi when he was filming.、Uh, so that's essentially how we how we did it. Wow.、Um, <clears throat> when the when the raid happens of his house,、um, how did you hear about that? How long? Time-wise, was it the next day that you heard about that? I mean, distance-wise, that must have been petrifying. That was an incredibly difficult experience、uh, because I was constantly fearful. If I、uh, heard from him before I opened up the message, I was fearful. I did not know what this message would be about. If I don't hear from him, I was more fearful.、Mm. What happened to him? So we basically used a、uh, secure、uh, messaging app, so that he can <clears throat> send me something、uh, real time.、Uh, th- there were two occasions where、uh, I was more nervous than、uh, other times. One is when he was arrested.、Uh, I knew they would crack the password on his phone. They would see the footage. Mm-hmm. They would probably figure out what he was up to, and that would be horrible.、Uh, I was relieved to hear that he was on medical parole, but but again he was in a critical condition. According to doctors, he would die any moment. <clears throat> Even at that at that time, he still wanted to continue filming.、Mm-hmm. But I, I essentially told him we have to stop right here now, and we managed to assist him and, and get him out of China. And the second time was when he was actually crossing the border,、mm. you know, crossing、uh, border control and customs.、Uh, we were relying on the bureaucracy and also the small window of opportunity for him to get out because the officials thought. He would die the next day.、Mm-hmm. That's why they released him. So they, they, we thought they wouldn't necessarily put him on the no-fly list, but we didn't know for sure. So the time it took him to get across the border and and, and the,、uh, eventually、uh, the plane departed and he left China. But even before he landed,、uh, any time if they figure out. They can order the aircraft to、Turn、return.、Around. Yeah. So that was the longest time、yeah. <laughs> for, for me. As far as、um, how many more films can you make about China? I mean, when do you hit a limit of you're not going to have the connections, or you're not going to be able to do this? I feel like what you've been able to show us is amazing. But how long can you do this? Are you looking to? Tell other stories. How do you keep putting a, a, a light to some of the atrocities, but also know that you're going to run out of people and places to tell? I mean, specifically, you can't go back, so that must be difficult to think about.、Um, unfortunately, the human rights situation in China is not improving.、Uh, being such a large country and so many violations. 
uh, so many atrocities committed every single day, there's no shortage of amazing stories. And unfortunately, uh, very, very few people are doing this kind of work. Um, as I continue doing my films, more and more people come to me with their stories. Mm. And when I heard the stories, I just felt excited that this is a wonderful story. I also feel dreadful that now this is my obligation. I, <laughs> I have to tell their, their story. They risk their lives to tell me their story. I have to make sure their story are, are told to the world. So even at this moment, I have three, five new projects in various stages. They're all amazing stories. Uh, we'll see. I, well, the, uh, many of my films have, have, have won different awards. And when people ask me how I felt, I always tell them the biggest award is one day that I don't have to do these films anymore. That change has, has has happened. I can do a romantic comedy. I can do I can do a thriller or something, you know. Um, but as long as the atrocities continues, I feel I have to do more films. Well, thank you for that. Um, I know for us being able to have seen Human Harvest and now this, it's it's making a difference. I think um, at least people being aware of what's going on. Um, and we can't wait to see what's coming up next. How can we follow you, Leon, and keep track of you and you know, follow your journey through, through getting these films to the public? Uh, one way is to subscribe to our newsletter at uh, flyingcloud.ca. Then with any new films or new screenings, we'll send you some uh, update. You can also follow our projects on Facebook where we post updates as well. Leon, thank you so much. It's a pleasure for you to bring it here to Tallgrass. And, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what people's reaction are to this film. It was heart-wrenching to watch.